My name is Christian Parenti. I'm a contributing editor at The Nation. And last year I was in China reporting on, among other things, the wind industry. And the wind industry is connected to larger problems in China, one of them being that there's a lot of social rebellion there. And I also reported on that. And China's growing at breakneck speed. Even despite this global downturn, it's expected to have fairly robust growth. The problem is, if China does not maintain its high rates of growth, the whole society is threatened by collapse and implosion because so many people need work. So to maintain that rate of growth, the Chinese economy must find more energy. Currently, it's dependent on soft brown coal, which is very dirty, very, very bad for the environment, it emits enormous amounts of CO2. They get 80% of their raw energy from coal, 63% of their electricity. So finally, the Chinese have started building windmills and other forms of alternative energy. And they have had, uh, as is their fashion, rapid and radical success with this. And partly because the, the, the economy in China is still very much a state-planned affair. It's not been completely neoliberalized and, and decentralized. So there are generous state subsidies and uh, vigorous state mandates requiring that the Chinese economy, uh, according with its five-year plans, meet 15% of its energy needs through renewable energy by 2020. And uh, they're on, on course to do that. More broadly, the issue of China's energy is an issue for all of us because China has just become the largest greenhouse gas emitter on the planet, surpassing the United States. It's now the biggest emitter of CO2. So China cannot keep building coal plants at the rate that it has for the last 15 years, which is a phenomenal rate, uh, without the earth facing really precipitous climate change sometime in the middle of this century. And so China, uh, along with the U.S. and other large economies, is absolutely central in making that work. And so wind is, is central in their efforts to go green. The reason the wind energy sector has gotten attention f f in China is, one, because there's money available from the UN to subsidize this. There is a tremendous need for energy in China. And also, there is beginning to be a concern about climate change. But more important politically than that is the effect that coal has locally. The air in many Chinese cities is simply unbreathable, and people are suffering. And economic analysts are doing the math and realizing that coal is damaging China's productivity because people are getting so sick from it. So local pollution is becoming, uh, is one of the impetuses for subsidizing wind, planning around wind, creating a new national grid, uh, et cetera, et cetera, building up their own wind industry. At first what they did was they licensed technology from the big foreign turbine manufacturers like Gamesa and Vestas. And now the Chinese wind firms like Goldwind are building their own turbines, they're, you know, increasing from 40 percent local, locally produced uh, components to 70 percent. They're coming up with their own designs. So they're developing their own industry, which wind turbine industry, which they see as also a potential uh, export that, that the rest of the world will be buying that technology in years to come. Now, whether or not even the very robust growth in wind farms and other alternative energies that China sees uh, will be enough is a different question. And um, the fact of the matter is, it's a good start, but the current trajectory of China's transformation towards green energy, like our own tra trajectory towards transformation of green energy, is happening at a completely inadequate pace. The one good thing about what's going on in China, or the one lesson we could draw from it is that they have, they still have at the core of their economy this idea of planning, this practice of planning. And uh, the firms that, uh, that fail to meet their goals are held accountable. That's something I think we can think about as Americans, and that we should work into our own uh, approach to climate change. This is not a matter that can just be left to the market 
subsidies and tricks and market, market incentives alone won't do it. There has to be goals, plans, and coercion in the forms of serious taxation and, and other penalties for firms that refuse to move in the right direction.